So we just went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I have been particularly excited for this one. Um, it's James Gunn's latest movie in the MCU, and now the last one, which is kind of surprising to hear, but it is. It's kind of a weird situation. A little upsetting. Hmm? A little upsetting. upsetting. Um, It's a little weird, too, because he's going straight to DC, but I'll, I'll talk about that more later. We want to talk about the movie. So, uh, what are your thoughts? I'm here with The Tick, which is my brother, for you who didn't know. Um, what are your thoughts, Tick, a.k.a. Adam Warlock, now? Very excited about him. Not a lot of fun. Uh, it's just, it's really captures more emotion than the previous two did. Uh, it's still funny, so uh, definitely, definitely still lots of very, 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 very funny moments. Uh, but I, I really liked it. I thought it was great. Yeah, this one in particular for me, um, it's kind of like what he just said. I'm very surprised at how emotional I actually was during it. And they kind of show you that in the trailers, too. Like, they, it's not like they lie to you, but I just didn't expect... I didn't expect my heart to be, like, ripped into a million different pieces as it was. Because there, there's... Quite a bit of that, yeah. There, there are many times when this movie... Um, really yanks at your heartstrings, especially with Rocket. And um, other characters, too. It's not just Rocket, either. So don't expect, like, every emotional moment to be with Rocket. I think the best ones are, but, like, there are more. And it's still a great movie otherwise. It definitely pulls on the heartstrings. Also, I think it's important to note that whereas, like, Rocket was, uh, fun character before. I doubt people would call him a fan favorite necessarily. Uh, I mean, he's a great character. But by the end of this movie, Rocket cements himself as a fan favorite character. Um, if you didn't like him before, you're going to like him now. If you liked him previously, he's going to be one of your favorites. I, I don't really know how, but I would almost go as far as to say he's my favorite now. After this movie, he is, he is one of he is, he is potentially the best member of Guardians of the Galaxy, in my opinion. I love Star Lord, but I mean, come on. Yeah, and Star Lord gets some He's love in this movie too. Yeah, Rocket. This this movie, honestly, I will say this uh, might be very triggering for some people if you have problems seeing like animals abuse. Because there's there's some stuff in this movie that they, I'm kind of surprised they got away, away with in a Marvel movie. Um, there's some things I'm surprised that they left in. Um, as far as like, it, it, it's not like a gory movie necessarily, but there's just so many instances where like, you, you're not used to seeing like a, a, a ton of blood in a, in a Marvel movie really. Like, Specifically blood. There's a very... There's more of it than normal. In a different setting than normal. It's nothing for you to see a cut on Spider-Man's face. But it's different. Right. And... Like he was saying, the... The emotional moments hit so hard. I know we keep... I know I keep saying that, but like, it's... It's what sold the movie... On its own for me. And on top of that, the action is just fantastic. There is... Yeah. Go ahead. A little less than what you would expect. A little less action than what you would expect. But it doesn't detract from the movie any. Uh, the movie is right. still, still fucked along without it. There's tons of tension the whole movie. Um, as, as, I was, as I was speaking with Nero earlier, uh, there were multiple times where I wanted to like go get a refill on the popcorn that we flew through. Uh, but... Uh, I just, I couldn't leave the theater because I felt like anything can happen at any moment, and I would miss it if I left for even one second. Uh, so lots of lots of tension, uh, just constant build-up. The payoff is good. Uh, lots of really good fights. 
one scene in particular is absolutely fantastic. Uh, very reminiscent of uh, Kingsman or uh, any sort of yeah. like slow mo. Um, yeah. Really, really good. Yeah. Okay. So for for non for spoiler people for people who have seen it. We're talking about the hallway one. You know full well what we're talking about. That is just absolutely jaw-dropping. I could not... I don't know how the fuck he filmed it, to be honest. Um, One of the coolest scenes I've ever seen in any Marvel movie. Yeah, the, the action in the... It's one of those things where, like, everything that you want out of this movie delivers, right? The writing delivers. The dialogue really delivers. The scenes with every, almost every scene with Rocket in this movie make, delivers for me. It's just shit. I actually teared up a little bit watching this, and I'm kind of surprised to say that because Marvel's been very mediocre for a minute. Now, me and Tick talked about this a little bit. We don't dislike the movies that are coming out. It's just they're not. They're not fantastic. They're not great. They're not. This, however, is great. This is truly great. You need to go see this. It deserves your time. The way I look at it, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home was a fantastic movie. It was great. I don't care that it was mostly fan service. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. It had. A, it was a little bit of a roller coaster. You know, there were some emotional moments. There were some funny moments. There was really cool scenes. And then you get to like Black Panther which all around was a pretty good movie, but that's it. It's just pretty good. Ant-Man was good, not great. This movie is on par with No Way Home, if not better. I, you see, here's the thing. As a lifelong Spider-Man fan, I hear I hear Tick here say that, and my first thought is, that's blasphemy. Traitor! But, yeah, I kind of think it might be better. And I'm really surprised to say that. It's really, it, it, look, I'm not going to enjoy it as much. Uh, I love Spider-Man so much. He's been one of my favorites since I was a kid. But realistically, as far as pure, as the pure movie goes, unbiased, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is a better movie. Yeah. It's just the other one appeals to us, like, specifically. It's because all the fans are in it. Yeah, but it's because of the fan service. But Guardians is is more emotional. The action scenes are as good. I won't say better necessarily, but they're as good. Right. And you know, there's more character development even, which is right. impressive. <laughs> it's it's very shocking because they also handle a lot more characters to develop than right than just, like, spoilers for No Way Home, but if you care, you've already seen it at this point. Come on, I'm sorry. At this point, they have the three Peters, but other than that, and you don't really have a a shit ton of character development aside from, you know, the villains a little bit, but even then, you don't really develop them a ton. You just kind of address... Move them around. Move them around a little. That's that's how I'd word it, yeah. But, no... This movie is everything I wanted it to be and more. You get to see major development for Tom Holland's Spider-Man and No Way Home, right? And you get to see, you know, a, a little a little development for Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. Toby's there. Zero and- development for Toby. None. Right. <laughs> he is identical. Um, but, but then when you get to, like, Guardian, you get to see Rocket develop. You get to see Star-Lord develop. You get to see Gamora in a new setting. Even even Groot gets some really good moments. Even though I wish he was in the movie a little more. Yeah. Uh, you get some good moments. You get some good pairings that you don't get to see very often. How often have you seen, you know, like a just Star Lord Groot area? You know what I mean? You get to see them where, tear off and break off yeah, for a second. Where yeah. where Groot is basically his like right hand man for a minute, and like he has like a plan. I won't spoil it, but it. It's interesting. Right. It's interesting, and you see some unique pairings, like like they were saying. There's a, there's a a bit in the movie where Nebula are with is with uh, Mantis and Drax, and I wasn't expecting anything of this. I was kind of like, oh, it's just gonna be, you know, a scene, but somehow in like the course of like five minutes, it gives 
crazy amount of development for all three of those characters. Yeah, uh, specifically, specifically Nebula gets a uh, more more screen time than you would think. Yeah, I, I didn't expect to see her as much in this movie as she was, but she really positive. belongs here. Yeah, yeah, she's she's not just she's not just annoying on the side kind of villain. She really takes part, and it's really really pretty good. And you really buy that she would be the way that she is. It, it's just, it's wonderful, and I love it. Um, and also, uh, the, the Ravager that took over for Yondu is pretty good in this movie. Cosmo is great. Cosmo's Ooh, great. Cosmo. There's there's so, a joke with Cosmo that happens throughout the movie, and it's always funny. Yeah, uh, Cosmo's wonderful. I'm so glad that they included Cosmo. Mm-hmm. Cosmo's a great little character, fun little character. Not not a main character, but one that you love to see. Yeah, Cosmo doesn't even need to be a main character, really. But even Cosmo got a moment towards the end where Cosmo got to shine some. And it's just cool. It's very cool. The whole movie was good. The only real complaints that I have are, like, nitpicks. They're not really even important. Yeah. To be no, honest, no real complaints. Uh, one thing we haven't touched on is Adam Warlock. He's also okay. In He's the in the movie. movie. He's. I can they confirm. Could have done Adam Warlock <laughs> a little better, maybe. Mm. Uh, but it, you know, it's all permissible. It's all permissible. I uh, can't really discuss why necessarily. But well, every issue I had with Adam Warlock is is permissible. We can a little bit. I mean, he's just not really in the movie that much. He's kind of yeah. one of those things. I, I was telling him this in the theater, and I've heard a lot of people say this, which I didn't buy until I saw it, and then I was like, yeah, where it felt like James Gunn setting up Adam Warlock was like something he did in Guardians 2 at the end, right? And then he writes all of Guardians 3, and then he's like, oh, shit, I forgot Adam Warlock was supposed to be in this movie. <laughs> Right. And then he yeah. just writes him in for bits. He still gets moments. His fights are cool. His his powers are neat. Like he gets moments in this movie. It's just don't expect like the deepest character development for him. Is all yeah. I'm saying. Heavy heavy props to the actor whom I can't remember the name. Will Poulter. Currently. Yes, Will Poulter. Thank you. Uh, he he did a pretty good job with what he had, um, and absolutely shredded the dude is. The dude is. The dude's dude. big. Yeah, he's definitely beefed up for this movie hardcore. You can <laughs> very clearly tell he is one happy to be here and two prepared to like really commit. You know what I mean? There's actors yeah. where you see them build up their bodies to this extent, and you're like, oh yeah, no, this dude is like, he's dedicated to this. Which why wouldn't we he be? Him. He's probably he's about our age, give or take. He's probably loves this shit. Loves this shit too. Yeah, I think he, I think he's got to be pushing thirty. Um, but he's a uh, he, he did a really 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 good job. Um, he beefed up similar to how Chris Evans. He's thirty. And, uh, do what? He he's exactly thirty. He is thirty. Yeah. He he he, he beefed up just like Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth did. I mean, obviously he's not Thor huge, but he's pretty big. And I'm interested to see what they do with him in the future based on uh, how the movie ends, which we are not going to spoil, but yeah. I'm just interested. He might not come back in a solo film, but I would be amazed if he didn't get a solo film of it. I, uh, well, we can talk about that a different time, but I think I would like, um, hmm. I think it'd be interesting to see. I don't know how an Adam Warlock solo film would work. Yeah, they could do Infinity Watch. Oh. Yeah, I guess they could. You're right. Infinity, um... Yeah. They even did that, like, Infinity Countdown and something a couple of years ago, which was pretty good. So they could, they could do a couple of things. I, I do think he's like going to be a big player in Secret Wars, though. 
Yeah, I, I know there's no more like Infinity Stones or anything, but you can still get, you know, Adam Warlock and Moon Dragon in there. Get some cool stuff. It'd be fun to build. Yeah, it'd be cool. I think um, it's one of those things where like this movie just like smashed most of the criticism I have lately of of Marvel stuff because like some of the shows haven't really been that good and don't really have any lasting stakes um, aside from Loki, which I love. I think is great. Um, for example, uh, uh, Tick here really doesn't like the Miss Marvel show. <laughs> Even though he binged the thing, she'll she'll be good as a side character. I, I think I think the the Marvels movie might be good, uh, because I think she just doesn't do well as like a main character. Yeah, she's not interesting enough to be a main character. But it, as a supporting character, Miss Marvel's pretty funny. She's she's good comedic relief. Mm -hmm. and just not not interesting enough to have her own arc. In my personal opinion, I kind of uh, think but, so as well. And their comic series sales would agree with you. <laughs> right. Because um, I like her in Champions and some other comics I've read her in. Um, she's good in that, as is Miles Morales. But, um, no, it's it, to, to go over it again one more time, it, this movie is funny, it is action-packed, it is just absolutely lovely start to finish, and any complaints that I have... Oh, we didn't even talk about the villain. I just realized... Um, he's kind of just, he's good and he's good. And the things that you, okay. So Marvel has this thing recently, right? Where they try to make you empathize with every villain ever since Thanos. They've tried very hard to do this. Sometimes you just need a punchable face. And this is that. <laughs> Y y yeah, there's one or two little scenes uh, where you kind of think he might care about Rocket a little bit, but as it goes on, you realize it's just his dedication to what it is he's trying to do, not necessarily Rocket or any individual that is under his care. Yeah, he's not he's he's not a good person. He's never presented as a good. person. He never will be really. either. Like, <laughs> yeah, which is which is good. Because, you know, sometimes you gotta, like you said, you gotta have a villain that's just straight up evil. Uh, I, I mean, that's really the basis of where comic books started, is the force of the good versus the force of the evil. And and this is this is kind of one of those stories. You know, even though the Guardians of the Galaxy are really an, an anti-hero looking kind of bunch, yeah. I mean, they, a lot of them have come into their own in the sense that they've accepted the hero role, and they, they you know, that's just how it is now. If they weren't before, this is very much the movie where they became heroes. Right, right. If nobody was convinced before, too. right, I would too. But if people weren't convinced before, after you see the ending of this movie, you will think so. Yeah. Um, very good, very good film. Overall rating for me is a nine out of ten, a heavy nine out of ten. That, it, you know, could have been a nine and a half, could have been a ten. It just, I don't feel like it's necessarily, you know, a perfect movie. But it's right. Very, very. Good. It is very good, and for me, the emotional moments just hit more than high enough for me to just love this film. It is fantastic, and it's the second it goes on Disney Plus, I'm going to watch it again. Um, cool. and I think you're going to convince your wife to watch it too, aren't you? <laughs> I'm gonna try to get her to watch it. I don't know if I'll. I don't know if I'll get her to watch it. Um, Has she seen I, the other two? I'm gonna have a hard time getting her to watch the previous Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, I think the first one's the best. I don't think that'd be that hard. Yeah, well, yeah, it'll, it'll be tough to talk her into it, but it, it doesn't matter if you like Marvel movies or not. You're gonna like this movie. Yeah, because another thing, too, and, and I kind of addressed this, I think, uh, with Tick another time, but there's there's two categories of Mar of MCU movies, right? There's Marvel movies, and then there's James Gunn Guardians of the Galaxy movies. They're kind of in their own section. They have their own vibe. They don't necessarily feel like the other movies, per se, and there is a step up in quality, for the most part, as far as like character writing and things like that and a character moment, stuff like that. 
tension, things like that. Like, doesn't mean that they're, like, always better. I'm not saying that. Infinity War, I still think, is the best Marvel movie, probably. But it's it's a clear step up, and this is just a continuation of that. I think this is very close uh, to being better than the other two for me. But as far as like franchise movies goes, this is one of them. This is gonna even if this is the last Guardians movie that they make, um, this this will be like you know it it it, if even if it is the last one that they make, I'll still be happy. Yeah, the way that this I I won't spoil anything. I'm, I'm gonna leave that for the spoiler section, which I'm gonna film in a minute. But even if this is the last one that they make, if you are a fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy, this movie will make you happy. Like, there are moments you will tear up. There are moments with severe emotion in there. But you will love this movie. It is truly great. I love it. And And also another thing, real quick, I wanted to touch on. If this is the kind of quality that we're going to start expecting from DC now that James is going to move over there. I am excited. Yeah, me too. Because Uh, if he's going to write movies like this for DC, DC is finally going to be, you know, outside of the typical, uh, you know, gray, dull, boring. Uh, We'll get some color and we'll get some emotion that, you know, people that you actually care about. Yeah. Our heroes aren't going to just, like, mindlessly kill people and be like, oh, I'm sad. <laughs> yeah. Don't anyway. kill people, uh, but how mindless. Eh, sometimes. <laughs> Wonder Woman can kill people. She's fine. She's always done that. Anyway, uh, that's a discussion for another time. But as far as my reading goes, um, I am... I can't in good conscience give this a 10, but I really want to. I'm just going to say 9. This movie is fantastic. I love almost everything about it, and anything that I dislike is honestly kind of a nitpick. This movie is great. Uh, Just to go over it one more time, it is funny. It is emotional. The action is fantastic. Like I said, the hallway fight is amazing. There's way more action than that. Like, the third act, a lot of it is action. So, like, if at any point you think there's not enough action, wait. Okay? Um... The emotional scenes with Rocket had me, like, tearing up. Um, and other characters. It's not just Rocket, like I said. But I, I think I'm going to have to stick with a 9. It's truly fantastic. Yep. So, anyway. I am going to be in the spoiler section here. And I'm going to talk all the nitty-gritty little shit. And that will probably be a longer bit, but it'll be there. So, uh, I appreciate everybody who watched. And I will see you guys in a second.